Today's video, we're going to do two things in one video. We're going to test the latency of the DJI Air unit with an analog module, for example, the rapid fire. So we're actually going to see its current latency if you're running analog on the DJI FPV goggles. And at the same time, we're going to be taking a look at this new module from URUAV, even though it's not the most elegant setups, but it gets the job done pretty good for a reasonable price. So let's get started. So what we're going to be doing today again, we're going to be testing the latency against the Fat Shark HDOs here, and they're both running the rapid fire module. I'll also explain how I did it, and I'll show you my testing methodology and also the setup I'm using. However, first let's take a quick look at the URUAV module. This is called the URUAV 5.8G RX Port 3.0 DJI. It has a long ass name. It's linked down below if you want to check it out. It's a reasonable price in my opinion. So what this does here is it does two things currently for the DJI FPV goggles, but it can also be used for other things, which I'll get into in a bit. So what this allows you to do is basically pipe your analog footage from any FPV Fat Shark module into your DJI goggles and also give you a power button for your DJI goggles, which is really nice to see here. As you can tell, the execution isn't the greatest, but it's not bad in my opinion. It's totally usable. And I really like what they've done here with the AV cable, as you can tell. Let's actually unplug everything. So if we take a closer look at the DJI goggles, we see we have two ports right here. One is going to be the AV input, and the other one's going to be the power or the DC input. And what this module does is it takes advantage of both of these ports and also incorporating a power button. Now, the way that this is mounted, as you can tell right here, all I had to do was remove the two screws that were on the other side and put them in through those, this pl white plastic piece also comes with this. It's really nice, not 3D printed, it's injection molding, so it's gonna handle just fine, and that's something you actually wanna see here. So just remove those two screws, put them in, and now this whole thing is in place and it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. Now, if we take a look at the ports here, so we see we have our voltage regulator, so this will step down the voltage to five volts for the module itself, and then pipe through the rest of the voltage down to your goggles, which is really nice to see here, and at the same time incorporating a power button. However, this is going to last only for so long, but I mean for 12 bucks you can't really complain. Now another really nice thing that I've noticed they've done with the design is these pin headers. As you can tell, they didn't use just one line of pin headers, they used this double one. And that gives it way more rigidity than using a single line, which I previously done on open hardware stuff or my open hardware docking or whatever it's called. And that'll keep it very, very rigid into place here. And uh, that's something I like. However, you still do have that flex going on for it. But they also provide you with some double-sided tape so you can cover some of this. So you don't accidentally hit any of these exposed uh, pads right here and, and cause a short circuit. Because usually on the FPV modules here, everything is really exposed on the bottom side. And you really don't want that to touch anything that's conductive. Or you could screw both of them up or even just, you know, at least you're module here and the modules are pretty goddamn expensive so you got to be careful these these cost more than a budget goggle or than two budget goggles put together so you got to be really careful with these now if we take a closer look right there that's the five volt switching regulator that's going to be uh basically stepping down the voltage from your 4s battery to five volts in order to have this power on and not blow up which is really nice clean video feed there is no noise generated from this circuit which is really great and i've had problems creating mine not to generate um noise in the in, in the signal and i really like how they've done that here and i'm about to copy this design so here we have another dc jack now they do provide you with these cables they give you a small one right here this will go into your goggles dc input power and will just slide right there so now all you need to do is plug in your battery up here and the dji air unit does provide you with that cable which is basically this one right here which you plug in a 4s into it so just like that, we basically have power for everything here. And at the same time, we'll be able to take full advantage of the power button, which again is really nice. Now for the AV output that's coming in from the Fat Shark module here, it's going to be right there. Now what's also really nice about this is you can use this with anything else that takes an AV input, which is insane. So that's a huge thing. So this is very universal, but at the same time, you also can use it for your DJI goggles. So this is not its only use case here. And if we also take a closer look on the left side, I really love this right here. Um, it might not mean much to a lot of people, but to me, this is really awesome. You could take full advantage of these pads because what they've broken out for you, five volts in ground. So you got the five volts right here. If you wanted to power 
something else. So you could give it 4S and this could act as a 5 volt regulator as well. So that's a 5 volt in ground right there. Audio and video. You could even take your video line and audio line out somewhere else with a wire, which is really great. That's coming in straight from the Fat Shark module. So that is awesome in itself right there. And I really, really like that. Now, another thing that I was truly afraid of, since the rapid fire does take a bit more power than most uh, modules here, this withstood it absolutely fine. There was no weird hissing, humming, and any type of noise from the switching regulator, which is also something really great and you actually want. However, I do highly recommend not installing this like this or you might fry your module so just be really careful i don't know if they've implemented any sort of security but it doesn't seem like they have so just be very very careful so you don't screw this whole thing up so it's supposed to be like this here so let's go ahead and plug in a battery and then we'll get into the latency testing so as you can tell i plugged in the battery that's what happened the first time and nothing happened even my goggles didn't turn on so i basically pooped myself at the time until i saw the power on button and now everything boots up, which is really nice and very convenient. I really like that. They got two things in one. As you can tell, everything is working. Now, this is not the best solution to run analog because even when you lose signal, your screen will go black and give you the DJI logo. So it works good, but don't push it. So basically, if you're, you're not going to be hitting bandos or doing anything crazy, then you could use it, even with the rapid fire. For example, when I start switching channels, it, the screen goes black because it shows the rapid fires menu here. And when it does that, the screen or the DJI goggle automatically thinks that there's no signal coming in and then it just blinks it out with the DJI uh, logo. And at the current moment in time, there is no way around that. So it's a nice alternative if you're not going to be doing anything that's going to be pushing your limits. If you're within range, then this is really great to have. And we'll get into the latency in a bit here. So in terms of power capabilities for this little module, that's great. And it runs everything pretty decent. However, I don't think, I'm pretty sure actually, none of the other modules that take Fat Shark modules, and I don't know what the fuck to call them. Uh, none of the other modules like this URUAV one that are out in the market will be able to combat that black screen issue. This is either hardware or software related from within the DJI goggles themselves, which they could probably release the software to fix that. Maybe, maybe not. If it's hardware, it's more likely it cannot. If it's software based, then they could probably do something about it. So that you got to take into consideration here. You're not going to be able to get the same amount of range as you normally would on a fat shark or yeah, basically on a fat shark with a module. For example, when you get really far and it starts breaking out, sometimes you could get that quick screen back in to kind of make out where the horizon is. However, with this, that's not the case. You're just going to get a black screen and you can say bye bye to your quadcopter. So just yeah, keep that in mind. So let's jump into the latency. So I did test the latency with this. And if you are curious how I did the latency, uh, I'll show you towards the end of the video because I'm pretty sure maybe some people don't even care about how I did that. But so for the Fast Track HDOs, the latency is anywhere between, I think, I'll have them flash on the screen, anywhere between 14 to 15 millisecond latency on the Fat Shark HDOs with the rapid fires. Now, when we move to the DJI goggles here, the latency is uh, obviously higher. And by higher, it's anywhere between 27 milliseconds was the best latency I've gotten as I remember. And, but it was more stable, you could consider it, well, I personally consider it as a 35 millisecond latency. The highs were around 37 at times, but most of the time you're in that 35 millisecond threshold. So the latency in the analog is 35 millisecond. This 35 millisecond plus however much latency your camera has, you add on top of it, then you get your total glass to glass latency, which means from the camera down to what you see here. And the latency was tested from the screen here, which I'll show you right now. So I've always wanted to 3D print the box for my latency testings, but I just never really got around to it. And I just found this cardboard box and this is what's been doing most of my latency testing. So in here, this is where I usually put the cameras to test their latencies. However, for the goggle latency, I got two exact same cameras, which is the Cadex Turbo F1s. They both have 1.4 to 1.5 millisecond latency. Very stable, very static. They never go above or below that. So we could add a 1.5 millisecond offset. So I'm using two of the same cameras here. So we have one camera in here, which will have an LED next to it. Now when the LED turns on, we can see from the point when the LED turns on to the point where the camera actually sent it through the yellow line, which is the signal on the oscilloscope. 
So when the LED turns on and the camera picks it up, it's going to send it to this video transmitter. Now this video transmitter is outputting and one of the goggle picks it up. And once the goggle picks it up, it'll show the screen went white and when the LED is off, it goes black. So at the same time, what I usually have is this camera connected, just not connected, just right there in front of the glass. Now I know this camera's latency is 1.4 to 1.5 milliseconds, so we could just add that offset. And as you can tell here, I have my video wire not connected anywhere. And why is that? Well, because the oscilloscope is listening on this signal, it's listening on that signal, and it's listening on the LED signal. So I can actually see the exact latency, and that's the uh, pictures we got there. And it's just really that simple. But you do need an oscilloscope with at least four channels, at least three channels, in order for you to do something like that, because we have to monitor three channels. We have to monitor when the LED went on, when the first camera picked it up and when the second camera picked it up. So basically this camera is not connected to anything except the oscilloscope and it just has power. And that's what we wait for really. And everything's connected on this circuit here. Now for this board right here, I've actually designed myself. It's a very simple board. It doesn't need much. I made a video on it a long time ago. Nobody really gave a shit about it, but yeah, it's available for everybody. If you want to go ahead and pick one up and uh, just build it. And I had a dedicated video on that as well. So yeah, just look for it on YouTube drone mesh camera latency testing, I guess, board, and uh, it might show up. I'll probably have the link down below as well. So overall latency, I personally would consider is 35 milliseconds, but it is between 27 and 37, but most of the tests that I've gotten were 35. However, if we do remove the offset from the second camera, it would be 33.5 millisecond latency. It was it, would it be one and a half? Yeah. So after we remove the offset, the DJI goggles, in my opinion, would have an average latency of 33.5 milliseconds. It's not bad, but you want a really fast camera with it, then you could kind of compensate for that. Because for example, if you had a 35 millisecond latency camera while you're flying the HDO, and you get a two millisecond latency camera flying the DJI goggles, you're gonna have the same exact latency basically. So the camera choice does make a difference. And it's kind of funny now because now the camera latency videos that I've done are actually very useful. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty crazy. So that's really awesome. I do have a shit ton of cameras also coming. We're gonna be testing their latency. And in future videos, I'll explain which cameras would be best to set up with your DJI goggles, especially if you're rocking an analog uh, module on them, such as this right here. And again, everything's linked down below. If you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.